Cinderlands. This time tonight we will be discussing our epilogues going through the next two to three months of your players of your characters' lives leading up to Bane's comeuppance. Then looking a bit further afield into the following two to three years. And eventually the later time beyond after that, um, which I'm sure will be thoroughly interesting to to play out and see what your characters get up to over that course of time. Um, so where we left off, you guys had uh, accepted the terms of Gel's deal and re and retrieve the the book of no good of bane and that's essentially where we left off and so what immediately happens after that is the next morning you guys will all head over to um azu city hand over the book to to arg and as a result of that you each will be gifted a planetar from Two from Bahamut, uh, one from Helm, one from Sylvanas, and one from Kelimvor, for each of you to have a celestial protection. Because oh. the most the most obvious thing that all people can agree on is that what you what you've done is actually paint a huge target on your backs, and so the the gods that have been most um, involved in your actions um actually pony up some of their own power and protection to to make sure that you have have a planetar each available to you as it as in Sorry, like, is it is it like yeah. and what an invisible one or is it just like they will just well they will exist however you want the deal with them to be what is a um, planetar i'm so sorry I'm just, just posting it in the Chat. Okay. Um, so Basically, an angel. Yeah. It's a celestial being. Oh yeah. right. So we do, do we really have a squad of little like guardian angels? angels yeah. yeah. One each, you do. So if you what? stay together, then multiple will group up with you. But they're they're essentially there as either act as deterrents to ensure that essentially until Bane, um, until any any dealings with Bane is done, you can't. You, you won't be under any direct threat. At least... Um, Fucking celestial you bodyguards. Your celestial bodyguards. Um, something else that essentially immediately happens once word starts to get out is that Torm's deal with Thoradin ends. The main benefit of that is Thoradin's greatsword, which ended up being a plus five um, luck blade essentially now it goes back to its default form of a plus plus three up to instead of up to a plus five essentially the big uh benefit you had with torm yeah um and from there i think it's worth discussing what all of you wanted to do with your immediate or short-term um futures and you will, so what we'll do is we'll each go around in turn just saying our aspirations, saying your aspirations for your character in this time span. And then we can discuss how things may interlink, how things may diverge, what things may go together, or even what aspects of your decisions might change hearing what other people have said. And so we'll just go from the top and with Talari, what is... Your short-term plans. Right. Her short-term plans are... So she's basically going to sort of take what she what she feels is a well-earned rest for, a, for the sort of very immediate... Um, you know, obviously everything's been quite a huge ordeal. Um, <clears throat> but basically she will state to sort of arg that she... While she's obviously having this rest, she is available if they want her help to combat Bane. But that being said, she won't go into Bane's domain 
she's more than happy to sort of stay on this side of the fence and heal people. Like if they, because she envisaged there's like a portal that they come sort of to and fro between the two places rather than just like sort of teleporting over there, or at least they would send the injured back and then send them back in, and she would be happy to, you know, work as a cleric basically, or you know, as a but yeah, uh, uh, on this side. But only if she's asked to. She wouldn't do it otherwise. But otherwise she just plans to basically rest until the Merkle thing happens. Mm-hmm. Until that's resolved. So that's her immediate short-term plans. Okay. Um, and Nadia? Okay. Uh, Nadia wanted to go to the capital to make sure Bane actually gets it. Uh, then uh, her main ob- <laughs> her main objective, the main thing she's likely to do is get on Thorin's case about reparations for the tidal wave incident because he said he's sorry and that he's not going to do it again but he still killed basically an entire city and should probably do something about that and we'll also point out to any high priest who will listen when she gets to the capital but this hell system fucking sucks because it's more full of holes than a fucking Swiss cheese or whatever the equivalent of this. What's the equivalent of Switzerland in this <laughs> game, <laughs> Matt? Uh, Who helm. makes Swiss cheese? Helm, helm cheese. cheese. <laughs> is all the uh, portals. <laughs> anything, anything, yeah, anything associated with hell probably shouldn't be full of holes given that he's like the protected deity, but nevertheless, more full of holes than cheese with holes in it. Uh, and an absolute crock of shit to boot. Um, and probably get into a row with somebody over that. But, yeah. Okay, Thoradin, what's your aspirations? Um, <clears throat> yes, yeah, similar so, so to the other guys, I think Thoradin will want to stay close to the investigation. The, the whole, every, how everything unfolds with Bane. And he, he will be vocal that he wants to help take down Bane. He, he won't be pushy, like, in some ways, he'll see what the others do in the JC. You know, if literally no one wants to get involved, um, as kind of Talari was saying, unless she's asked, you won't get involved. Thorin is not going to go rushing in there by himself. So, yeah. As much as he wants to be on the front line and really stick it to Bane. He won't do it without friends. Yeah, yeah. He, he'd feel a bit lost like without them and, you know, not having Torm support, I think. Yeah. I think he's still got the strength, so he's still he's still quite comfortable with his power. But yeah. Okay. And and also going off what Nadia said, you know, making sure Thoradin kinda reconciles what he's done. <sighs> I, I d I don't really know. Is he what gonna is do. he gonna argue with her about it or is he gonna like accept no. that she's got a point? He 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 won't argue. Uh, he'll accept, but he'll kind of know he's a bit lost of like what to do. He's never really been in a situation where he's had to kind of uh, own up to his mistakes <laughs> and actually like give back. And yeah, he he's actually not, he's... does have an idea if he doesn't know what he or if he wants to make rep- reparations and doesn't know how. Yeah, he's open. And Depending that would idea. be that the destruction of that port has created a massive risk to people who want to cross Kelifamore's wastes. So, given how strong a fighter he is, and he's not afraid of the undead and all the rest of that stuff, either trying to reclaim a foothold in what was once that port, or just aiding with the like the fighting and stuff that people do in the wastes, because that would be, you know, thematically appropriate. <laughs> yeah, I like that idea. He goes over and help, helps where he can. Right. Start, yeah. That's probably for like the next section of the epilogue, yeah. though. So I'll yeah, stop, only, I will yeah. stop interrupting your this section of the epilogue. Mm. That's absolutely right. That's a good aspiration for sure. Yeah. Mm. Um, and Krusk, what's your aspirations? Yeah. Okay. Um, so Krask, uh, he feels like he's got work to do. I mean, for him, this is kind of like, 
I think the start of his next chapter. So um, I think unless he's specifically called on to help out with the Bane stuff, um, short term things for him is he's going to go after Elosius because um, <laughs> A, he's not sure if Elosius is still after him and B, Elosius is kind of like a criminal dangerous person anyway. So he's going to try and track him down and give him the potato treatment. Um, and <laughs> <Pumped him. laughs> while he's <laughs> while he's uh, tracking him down, I guess he'll just be picking up teleportation circles for like all of the cities, and he's also going to try and scout out an area for the JC. Mm -hmm. Um, I think probably he'd like it to not be tied to a particular city, actually. So I'll try and find like a nice empty bit of land somewhere and kind of build it up. Mm -hmm. Um, from there, and then, uh. Going on from that, turning the JC rather than just kind of our group into like an actual like structured organization um, with hopefully Faradin and Desi helping him out because um, originally they said they would kind of stick around with the JC and help out a bit. So in these initial stages, it's um, kind of very carefully vetting each member, like it will either go through Krask or Faradin or Desi. Um, and starting to work on like what are the oaths or principles of the sort of the new JC or like the chapter two of the JC, um, and also then starting to like take on jobs just like we did, but like more focused on jobs, um, you know, to kind of spread our reputation more and let people know that this is like a new organization that's sort of branching out and uh, start like an apprenticeship program. And uh, at this point as well, he is going to start negotiations with Certis Deep to see if he can kind of get them to change their ways. Well, we'll see um, how that fades into the medium to long term. Mm. Oh, okay, that's, yeah. yeah are, we, are we just saying the short term? Just the short term, yeah. yeah. Oh, sorry, okay, okay. So, yeah, that's that's the short term. Yeah. That's, yeah. Uh, It'd be interesting as well with that because it's like, it'd probably be the main, the, well, at least the only one we've seen, really, <clears throat> of an organisation that's not tied to a god. Right, because like Helm is neutral, right? But Helm is tied to Helm, whereas the JC is not tied to anything. You know, it's tied to, I guess, everyone, the realm, right? That's the yeah. represented for sure. You know, and that that could be interesting because I'm sure there are people out there that are undecided or neutral generally. There's yeah. there's certainly a factor of that because you've, as a, as a collective, you've pre you've presented yourselves as both for as the as the every man you were saying, Sonny, is that you've you've not necessarily been focused purely on the good cities and doing good there. You presented positive faces to to evil cities and neutral cities and and good cities yeah. across across the board. So you've certainly got a a positive story to tell across across all of them, mm. which is which is definitely something that works in your favour. Um. Thank you, Kresk. And to Zelda, um, what's your short-term plan or aspirations? Well, much like the others, I want to make sure Bane goes down, legally speaking. So I should probably go to the proceedings, make sure things are going okay. Although she'd probably be incredibly tempted to go on a little quest with Krask to go find Elosius, that fucker. <laughs> He had a chance of redemption. He failed. It's time to get it. Okay? So, probably Temptation's too big for that one, so she'll go to that. Mm. <clears throat> but generally, uh, I think, in that initial part, and same with the others, like, unless requested specifically to go and fight Bane, probably wouldn't. And, mm -hmm. uh, Tulare, I don't know about you, but I feel like the girls deserve a spa day. <laughs> yeah, I mean, she's like I said, she's yes, up for it. Spa day, spa yeah. day. It's all part of that well earned rest, you know? Yeah, go to the capital, have a spa day, because, I mean, if Desi and if Desi and Nadia are both going, come for a little holiday. Yeah, she. not have to do anything. She'll be, she'll be up for that, for sure. Like, she's basically just killing, like I said, she's just killing time until Merkel's sorted, so she'll be happy to not have to fight something, mm. you know? There you go. Okay. Um, so out of hearing your aspirations for the short term, is there anything that majorly changes from what you've heard from everyone else saying? 
anything that um, you feel would make things diverge uh, a large, to a large extent from what we've started to discuss so far? I don't think nothing for Talari short term, I don't think. Nothing for me, yeah. Okay. Uh, nothing apart from what I've already said. I'm going on that hunt with Krusk, which I probably wasn't going to do before. And I imagine while he's also kind of hunting Elosius, and there's a small bit of, oh, that could be a good place for the JC. Mm. I she'd probably put her two cents in, but that's about it. Yeah, it's nice. So, <clears throat> over the rest of the next two to three months of time, each of you are interviewed by the Capital Priests. The Their main course of interviewing really is just to see how well the the facts that have been presented line up to what your story is and very easily what what you're saying is true backing up from how you've found the bag big bagged book of bane to how like the other gods have tried to interact with you all the way down to um just who you found and how they treated you. And from the findings, so uh, predominantly the, the you players, the JC, are blamed by evil priests, surprise, surprise, mm. for, for trying to punish a god for acting within their nature is a very common phrase that has banded, been bandied about with your time. But it's quite clear from the neutral and the other priests around that no matter how much of a nature God can have, this is clearly pushing beyond any boundaries of such. Um, and so Bane themselves are sentenced to a thousand years of banishment. Bane themselves will be um, caught and will be sent to the same the same place that uh, Tyr essentially is sent to a, a place of eternal nothingness. And so, even now after the thousand years of banishment, um, Bane will be a new Bane will be selected. Effectively, is the is the plans from the big bad book of Bane. Um, other gods that have been found to have been corrupted. By Bane's influence. So some of these are gods that have came forward and said, actually, I found myself to be corrupted by this, or just from the from the big bad book of Bane up to um to say, Yeah, okay, fine, you caught me. So some of those gods is Ilmata, so the the god of uh, endurance, one of whom was acting very suspiciously for um or very, very erratically and very extreme in their demands of endurance from their followers who's supposed to be a good god a, a friend of Tyr and Torm Cyric surprise surprise <laughs> um, Talos Serta, Lyra um, so Lyra the goddess of joy um, the Moradin um, Timora and Thrym so each of those gods are actually agree to actually undergo ascendancy again to try and um, re reclaim aspects of their true self ab absent of whatever corrupting influence Bane had tried to seep into their characters of go of their gods. Um, from all this, a new a new tier is agreed to be chosen soon to have been um, to be reascended. Um, unfortunately, the original tier is gone. There is no recovering of the original tier, but the the fate that tier had and the lack of tiers in, as an entity in the Ascendant Lands is going to be is going to return. A suitable candidate for Merkel is chosen, and preparations begin to be made. That's closer to the the end of the end of the period, and in fact, at the very end of the probably the last three, last two weeks of this short term period um, when like a lot of people are gearing up to go into the domain of death to try and or all the domain of war to try and find Bane to take him on Bane actually turns up 
strolls up, walks in, and says, slap me in irons, I agree, and take my fate. Interesting. Um, so without, without a fight at all? Without a fight at all. Wow. Please tell me somebody checks that that's actually Bane and the majority of his power. <laughs> what they are to ascertain, it is. Um, the from all you can do for those of you looking for Elosius, you cannot find him. He, does, as far as you can tell, no matter through divination or any other means, you are not able to find him on this plane of existence for wherever he may be. Mm. Mm. And the last act of this short-term period is actually having the Justice Collective to prove to act as an independent organization, officially approved to, so independent from the Helm, Encampment Mercenaries, independent from um, any individual god in particular, but they agree, the the capital agree that you'll have Bahamut, Sylvanas, and Helm, those three gods acting as benefactors and general guides, as it were, to make sure that if any um, any help is required, then you've got direct, then the Justice Collective have direct um, assistance available. And so if there's any guidance that's required, any funding is required, all come through those gods in particular. Hmm. No Azuth, that's surprising. Nothing from no Arg. Azuth. Nothing from Arg. Arg as a uh, individual, at the, as in the short term at least, is very busy trying to make sure that the the history, the story of what the Justice Collective have done, as as he was your independent go between, he's very busy acting as like your voice. So while you're each indiv in interviewed individually, it's Arg that's going to all these meetings. It's Arg presenting all the evidence. It's Arg being proving that I was independent here. I I view things for everybody so that no one can say this wasn't above board. Every there's no, nothing, nothing underhanded here. I would, I showed no favoritism. I and so on and so forth to prove that. Um, that that nothing can be under, un, undone from what you've achieved as a group. Oh, that's good. Um, so yes, yeah, so that's the short term of how things have gone for you guys. Quite interesting. Hmm. That didn't go the way I thought it would. That didn't go the way I expected it. Mm. Too easy. What is, what is Bane scared. up to? You know, yeah, Bane's got to be up to something, right? There's no way someone schemes for that long and just... You know. and then goes, yeah, you got me. Yeah, exactly. You know what it is, don't you? You know what it is. He's looked at Krusk and he's gone, yeah, that guy's going to start the next Holy War. I don't need to do shit. <laughs> <laughs> no, <I don't> know. <laughs> you never know, right? You might be right. Then again, I mean, that... as, far as, I was, as far as I was aware, Bane wanted to start a war that he would then come out on top of, given being tyranny. And well, the best way to stay out... On... The best way to not die in, die in a war is to be in prison, I guess. It's not yeah, to fight Bane it. Bane has been destroyed. The ba the current Bane has been destroyed. Right. Mm. I was going to say that is the end result of this, isn't it? He's destroyed. There's no like vanished to another realm. There's yeah. no hidden away. The Bane, the, the Bane that turns up and says "clack me in arms" is destroyed. So, see, it's as... the way, sorry, the way you say that, the Bane <laughs> that turns up. <laughs> Yeah. They <laughs> expect there to be another secret Bane hiding somewhere. We'll, we'll get to it. Don't worry, guys. Don't worry. It's all part, <laughs> exactly, of, right? it's all it. part of the epilogue. Okay. So, looking at the medium term going forward. So, this is the following two to three years after everything has happened. One of the first... So, We'll say for the purpose of looking in the medium term, for the first one of the first things that happens is straight away after the Justice Collective is marked as an independent organization, a second organization is petitioned to um to come up. And they are called the last thing you see. Also go by the formal term of lettuce. Um, lettuce. The, la the last thing you see is the yeah. secondary organization. 
This has benefactors of Baal, Talos, and Helm. Act as, so again, those three gods are acting as um, same way as the Justice Collective. They're not direct, like they don't, you don't need to take orders from these gods. They're just there as general guidance, um, funds if you need any, and general like guidance and weight for decision making if you need any of it. Um, Helm, throughout your time with um, Helm as a benefactor for the Justice Collective, it's been particularly silent. He's barely done anything if you've come to ask him of it. He's just very much of a very gentle guiding hand. If you go to any of the gods, it's Bahama or if it's Sylvanas, it's not, it's not generally Helm. And you can expect as such for Helm to work act the same way for this organization as a overseer of a um, of a site for for um, over uh, yeah overseeing just to make sure things are okay. Um, the main um, the main thing the lettuce organization want to achieve is to correct justices, as they put it. Um, essentially, they aim to seek failure and loss as they see them as vital functions of the realm, as to doing good. Is such as um, protecting so protecting a demon sacrifice face festival and collecting volunteers is a justice service that they can provide. Whereas the Justice Collective would likely round up those demons and kill them. Try to put you at odds with that kind of mindset. Um, so with that, um, um, well, also. Um, after the Merkel ascendancy, the original, so of the three, you had the the human, or not, not the, the mortal, um, you had the uh, in seat, the, the sitting Merkel, and then the original Merkel, the one that you had in the medallion. Mm. The original Merkel, the one in the medallion, wins ascendancy and is restored to full working order. And to Lari, you do give birth to a healthy baby, Silvo. Nice. And with that, nice. I think it's worth discussing our medium-term aspirations. Right. So, yeah, Talari, take it away. So, uh, obviously, after the Merkel thing was sorted out, she was hoping that, obviously, she would get a Zilvo, which now she has. So, this is where things might get a little bit tricky. So, basically, her plan... <clears throat> is the house, you know, the JC house, she would like to claim it for herself in the hopes that she can live there safely with Zilvo. Now, that doesn't mean that no one's obviously welcome. She would be obviously, you know, everyone else is sort of welcome to, you know, be there whenever they want to be. It's like a, it's a, what's it called? Um, safe haven for them, you know. Doors are always open. She would fashion, um, uh, what do we say? Sending stones, so that you can always contact her if um, if you needed entry. And she would always set it up in a fixed location, so people knew where she was as well. So she wouldn't move around. Um, <clears throat> her plan is to set herself actually fairly fairly close to Azuth Azuth City, because of all the people that she met outside of the JC themselves, she found that Args was the most at least somewhat welcoming. And obviously that because of his help and everything. Um and just anything magical based. She feels that she can get you know, because they've got all the magics there, she feels that they would help her more than maybe anyone else would if she needed it. Um but that would be her plan is to set up claim the house and set up shop just outside of Azuth Azuth uh, uh city and live with Zilvo. That would be the sort of mid term if people allow her to take the house. Laddie's opinion is that you can fucking have it, mate. Good. It's one down. Um, <laughs> Desi has no care for material things. You can take the house. She's not really fussed. Excellent. That's two. <laughs> nah, no, Thordia, Thordia wants it. Well, he wants to be a part of it as much as he can. Like, a free place to crash. 
If we say crash, I think he'll be there pretty often. I mean, she wouldn't. She, she so it's okay. So as far as she's concerned, right? You are all welcome in there whenever you feel like. So, if Thoradin's down almost every weekend, then Thoradin's down almost every weekend. I mean, obviously, Thoradin yeah. has to figure out how to get there because, like I said, she's going to be in one lo, you know, localized place. So unless you're with Krusk, who can just hop around, um. But that's why the other reason why she wants to be near a city, like near a city, so especially one as big as Azuth, is because if you wanted to get to her, it's relatively easy. You know, she'd probably be like an hour or so out away from it. So it's like you just teleport to Azuth and then you can get there without much of a hassle. So she wouldn't ever deny any of you, as long as you're not a danger to obviously her and Zilvo, which I, she doesn't really think any of you would be. Um, She would obviously, you know. As long as you're not a danger to me and my kids, she says to four or four incredibly powerful and fairly violent individuals. I mean, she, she, she treats, she feels yeah, that the rest of you. I know it's she, a trust. Thing. I don't know. She feels the rest of you are like her family as well, right? So she wouldn't ever, and she knows the importance of family, especially. So she would never deny anyone in the in the JC, obviously, well, of us lot anyway, um, access to that house. If they are, I know. It. I, yeah, I absolutely know it's a trust thing. It's just very funny the way you put it. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. But yeah, she um, yeah. So I don't know if that changes Thorin's mind or not. No, I think he'll be using it as a place to crash between JC jobs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think. Yeah. Okay. What about Krusk? How does he feel about Any it? Progress? Um, yeah, I think Krusk wouldn't mind because it doesn't really fit into. His vision for the JC going forwards, because um, you want a physical, like a physical yeah, you want physical yeah, presence, yeah. yeah. So yeah, I think that for him, helps. he's he's not too worried. Excellent. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that cool. That works out then. As long as Desi can come round and cook. Yeah. Yeah. With Delari ever so often. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, think she'd miss that. She would obviously like when you were about to enter. She would like let you come into that place so it can fashion whatever it is you want to fashion. Because I think that's how. Well, in order to get someone in, I think everyone's got to exit, and then the whole yeah, so she... together. Yes, it's only gonna be the the two of them, so it shouldn't be too uh, too difficult for her to do. At least in the short term, anyway, because you know, Zilva would be an infant, so just sort of stroll it out, you know, stroll it back in. So yeah. Does a baby know how to attune to a key? I suppose it wouldn't need to, I guess. <laughs> but yeah. Probably not. There's, there's details. What are you talking about? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Most magic systems have, until they're a certain age, like the babies basically can't parental, parental, yeah. you can't tell their mother. Parental authority. You can almost imagine, because while she was pregnant, she attuned to it. So, like, secondary attunement? Secondhand oh, yeah, attunement? Like secondary immunity. Yeah. yeah I'll take it's, it. like, it's like how you ride through on the bus when you're under six. Yeah, yeah, that's about <laughs> you it. You sat on your mum's lap. <laughs> yeah. Excellent. <laughs> Except it's magic item. The weave is beholden to many laws, one of which is age rights. Right. There you go, it's a Talari's house on the... Uh, Talari's on the house map. on the prairie. Yeah. Yep, Talari's house will always forever exist um, for you all to visit and um, have fun and a bit of merriment on. Um... Oh, she, sorry, and she perfects her 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 thing as well. Her, oh, her awesome <laughs> dessert. Yeah, Excellent. yeah. So basically, I think what it ends up being, or at least if it is, um, they're basically bite-sized cheesecakes. That was basically what she was over aiming for. Yes. Um. So they basically just little square. Basically, it'd be like a tray of cheesecake that she just cuts up into squares because that's how it sort of got iterated. That's why she was messing around with cheeses. That's why she was messing around with biscuits. Oh. It's because. Ultimately, she was basically trying to invent cheesecake in a way, like she was trying to get to, but not like the big one, like to just like, you know, little bites, yeah, canapes, yeah, and then canapes. and the idea is like well, she never got to in the in the sessions, but basically she would adorn something on the top of each one to suit the person gonna that's going to be like, fed it, like little like um. Those nope. little fancy desserts, so they've each got a different fruit on. Yeah, yeah, exactly, like a fruit or a little like a wafer or a chocolate. Thing. Yeah, so basically, you would adorn the top of each one based on each one of you as well, especially. But that's how that's where she aims to get to. That's where she gets to, I suppose. Uh, that's why I put it in mid term because obviously that's going to take time. But that's uh, that's the other side of that as well. Very sweet. Um, 
I I think over the time of in, up to the midterm, over the years, you try and perfect the, your your cheesecakes. They end up being imbued with a little bit of like your healing magic, and so like, like they become quite quite a they become like quite a good treat like yeah. to have like instead of like a instead of like a health potion, it's like Talaria's treats. She uh, and you can just she did she did come up with a name for it that is awful, which is Crunchies. Yeah. That's so. <laughs> but, yeah. That's the most ridiculous thing. Crunchies. Crunchies, yeah. I look forward to the adverts. Oh yeah. 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 Yep. Very sweet. And Nadia, what's your uh, medium term aspirations? Medium term, go home, keep up communications with Talari, uh, to make sure she and her baby are okay, especially given how, um. An experienced a parent, Talari, is going to be. Uh... Oh, if we're splitting splitting things up, Nadia wants the horse. I don't think anyone's going to argue with that. Nobody else wants the damn horse. No. I, I mean, so. I think every time Desi saw you, if you had the horse, you would probably come up to it and give it a little pet and stuff. But no, she's not one for taking care of animals. I Doesn't think, want her own horse. <laughs> um. She will probably invite Desi home with her, because she knows that Desi needs a home, if only on a temporary basis. Well, fudge. Do I react to this now, or do I wait for my turn? I feel like I react to this now. You can react to it right. now if you want. Balls of tears. Absolutely emotional. Um, she would probably be like, I don't even know why I'm crying so much. <laughs> um, but, Desi. but then, yeah, she'd be like, she'd probably say yes, but then she'd still want to go out to like help Krusk with the JC thing. So she'd probably say yes initially and immediately sort of go with you and get Krusk to kind of come get her when he's ready to start doing bits. But for yeah, for a, for a short while or a little little time, she would kind of she would like to be part of the part of something, place like to, a, a place to call show. home, kind of thing. A that, place to call home, yeah. That's roughly the idea. Also, to give her a relatively stable environment with actual authority mm. figures who aren't complete dickheads, mm. so that she has you know somewhere that she doesn't have to make like fucking world changing decisions by herself you can just you know do whatever uh then start working on upholding her oath uh looking for destructive influences and uh destroying them first <laughs> <laughs> the best defense is a good offense good old pre-violence yeah. Good old pre-violence. Pre-violence. Or at least destroying them before they can become too much of a problem. Um, building up a web of like contacts of rumours, a bit like Thoradin's like load of dodgy folk. Oh, yeah, network. Yeah. Uh, do you do you, do you do you connect with dodgy folk, or do you try and make it a little bit more? She would. Pr she would probably pay dodgy folk for information. Hmm. That's fine, because. Why not? But also more reputable sources of information. Just listen to whoever can actually tell you useful stuff. Um, what did I write? Hunting bandits, other threats to people going about their lives, special prejudice to nasty demon things. Uh, probably accompanied by Nathaniel and a whole pack of diabols, and possibly sometimes Desi. I don't know. Um, yeah, Desi, Desi would probably join you for well, excursions. Absolutely. Uh turn up to Talari's house to say hi to Talari, whoever else happens to be there, the baby and yeah, the house is a good place for a party because it provides all the drinks for you. Indeed. Mm -hmm. And decorates itself. And decorates itself. That's the other reason Talari wants it. Absolute laziness. Doesn't uh -huh. have to clean, doesn't have to do anything. <laughs> wants to, night, want to repaint the house, the house party. repaints itself. Yeah. <laughs> for one night the house is a good place for a party. Mm. Um, she does get less erratic as the years go on I think also at some point during the medium term we'll probably realise something can be done about her head wound 
and the fact that she has permanent brain damage and will possibly ask Talari and Nathaniel's help in fixing it. Yeah, Talari would certainly do whatever she can. Sure. Well, you have the you have the regeneration spell, and Nathaniel will eventually get Wish, which gives him the regeneration spell too. But she could, le yeah, I think she would learn it eventually. I don't know. She doesn't have regeneration at the moment. Is it not regenerate? It's restore limb or whatever the. F yeah, she doesn't have that. Is. She. I don't think we got enough to. I don't think we got high enough level for that one. Oh, do you not? No. Fair enough. And I don't. I but can't still, imagine she'd get in any more levels now. But. Magical healer. Hmm. Worth a shot. Oh, yeah. Exactly. I mean, it, she's a nurse, not a doctor, right? That would, so. Yeah. I think you've got something that would help. Uh, I can't remember what it is. I don't know. Regenerate the seventh level spell. Yeah. It's not regenerate. It's. I don't know. It's the one the you use. Restoration? That's re greater restoration. That's the one, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, you should be able to get greater. It's a fifth level spell, so you yeah. Can't Already you got greater restoration because you used it yeah. on me to cure me of a level of exhaustion once. Yes, and it, yeah, she has, she has got that as well. Yeah, she has got uh, that as well. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. Uh, but yes, that is my medium term. Caused lots of problems for lots of people. <laughs> How do you expect a um, regenerated, restored, less brain damaged Nadia to be? She gets less erratic. Basically, it's the uh, her retention problems. Her planning problems and her impulsiveness are all results of the fact that her brain is fucked. She has a dent in her head. Is it? She's missing part of her prefrontal cortex. It's not. That's not tied to a barbarian rage or anything, right? That's always that an independent. Partly. Thing? So she's got a war spirit living in her head. It might well be keeping her alive. It is possibly trying to do part of the job of her missing mind, which just makes things worse. She's not going to lose the war spirit. She's still probably going to be quite easily angered and enthusiastic towards violence and so on and so forth. She's just going to get, like, less... Jumping in harm's way and all that stuff and loot, like, blacking well, out. you get more control, I guess. Yeah, your, your ability yeah, to but slightly out more to an extent. Slightly more control... And it's more like the little things in everyday life that are more likely to change for the better. Almost sounds like uh, she's going to change subclass from a berserker to something else. No, she else. stays a berserker. Oh, okay. She stays a berserker. Uh, but yeah, a lot of th a lot of small things in her everyday life would probably improve, including her chronic pain. Hmm. I suppose that's just not being with the JC as much, though. <laughs> I mean, the amount of headache, cross-induced headaches she's had is actually quite high. There have been several instances she has just left a conversation, and nearly all of them were because she wanted to thump cross. Sorry, cross. <laughs> it's not, you know, I was, I was I think she's not the only one, one <laughs> apparently. Was, you know, cross, cross a certain way with people. It depends yeah, on what but... side he's on of the conversation, but he, he does have a certain way with people. <laughs> mm. Yeah, less overwhelming urges to punch people in the face. Less. She there was a lot of things that she genuinely struggles with. It hasn't come up massively, like explicitly, but there is a definite reason that she's like, "Why are you asking me to help plan things? Why are you asking me my opinion? I'm really bad at that kind of thing." And that's because her head is fucked, and she genuinely is really bad at that kind of thing. No, she's still just as well. She's not still just as crazy, but she's gone from like a nine to a seven, maybe, mm -hmm. on the crazy oh. scale. It's still the same scale, just dialed down a little bit. Mm -hmm. That's very interesting. She's still far too fond of swinging at max of things. It's it's <laughs> fine. It's fun. Like the you... Nadia you know and put up with is still there. The, she's still she's, fun. She's the dragon, du uh, the the demon duster as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Not giving up that axe. I like that axe. It's a good axe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, oh yeah. Sorry. The your once once Bane hands himself in, your Thanatars um, are returned as well. Thank goodness. Oh okay. The, 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 they don't go with you forever. Okay. Um, it was just during the that intro. God dang it. <laughs> Gonna be quite um, helpful to be honest. Like having a Planetar above our house area, you know, just in case. Was it was never intended as a forever thing. Ah. Uh, um, 
So, I mean, Thoradin. Can, can you imagine life? Just you know. sick. You can deal with Bay today. <laughs> <laughs> Thoradin. Um. Okay. <laughs> Thoradin will definitely use a plan saw as much as she can. See in action. Um. But no, his his mid um goals. Um. I think he he'll wanna get back into contact with Gaul. I mean, to be honest, this might be a short term. But yeah, he'll want to get into contact with Gaul, see how he's doing, make sure he's alive, <laughs> and um, yeah, just tell him about everything that went on and kind of rekindle after after he kind of left. Um, and then his main goal is really just to continue with the JC um, and help Krusk. I'm sure they'll be in and out of various inns without the interdimensional house and uh, setting up the JC. He'll obviously let Krusk lead a lot of that. Um, but uh, yeah, he'll always be there to help. And as it's two, three years, his main aim is to really secure as much gold as he can um, to then later retire uh, and buy a bit of land. So, I mean, I put 30 to 50K. I don't know, maybe that's too much, but um, yeah, he'll want a, enough gold that he can just sail off into the horizon and do, do his own thing and never have to kind of work again. Yeah. Yeah. That's about it. The five year plans. Yeah. Get rich in five years, but <laughs> um he's out of his peak now, he's getting older, like you know, some of his joints are aching after everything, so he'll slowly, steadily kind of uh yeah. He's an old man now. Down. He is, yeah. Great yeah. starting to encroach encroach on the on the red beard. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah be grey. Hints of grey coming in. Mm. Um, okay, and Krusk, your medium terms. So yeah, I got slightly carried away before, and I was starting my medium, but <laughs> uh, yeah, I'll just quickly skim for it because I kind of said it before. But basically, just mainly focusing on the JC and building it out, along with Froden and Dizzy, hopefully helping coming up with the oaths and like principles that the kind of new version of the JC is going to be following and kind of working towards turning them into almost like paladin type oaths that new members can swear um and uh yeah carrying out like jobs on like a larger scale training new people sorry young people in like an academy type thing or like an apprenticeship program <laughs> and Smart. yeah I kind of said all that before and then the thing I didn't quite get to was He'll start entering, or at least starting like a dialogue with Cersei's Deep to um, either convince them to change their ways, or release the slaves, or work out something, you know, to, to yeah, before he uh, <laughs> opens hostilities. But I mean, basic, basically, at this point, it's really about building out the new, the reputation of like the new JC, mm -hmm. making them as kind of formidable a force as he can, and also kind of laying the structure for um you know having that kind of core of like really good members who are like really believe in like the mission you know like cross does like really believe in the mission and sort and of off like officers and, almost like the generals yeah yeah exactly yeah because you know where he sees it going is there's going to be a point where even though like at the moment probably crusk and Froden and desi will be kind of hand picking or like hand you know sort of interviewing people but as it gets bigger it's not going to be possible and mm also needs to give members kind of that independence to make their own minds up about jobs and stuff like you know they can probably run it by crust right now but yeah in the future you kind of just needs to have those those sort of like like sunny said like you know the generals or the officers type thing in the in the organization and yeah when he goes to certis deep it will fully be like i'm here representing the jc this is what we think and yeah sort of seeing how they respond mm -hmm. very interesting I'd be mean, curious to uh, see if they get a seat at like, you know, because obviously there's like a council, the council of um, sort of high uh, high priests and stuff. Mm -hmm. Like, would they would would the JC get such size and reputation that they'd actually be like offered a seat? Mm -hmm. You know, that'd be an interesting goal, interesting you know, thing to, to aim towards. Yeah, yeah that's fair. like that's when you've hit it right. Like when you've actually like you're so big. Mm. Like we actually have to like make you part of, you know, realm wide yeah. decisions. Yeah, yeah, that's true. I mean, that's definitely like 
the kind of thing that he would obviously like love for it to happen. I assume at this point he's probably got like his base and stuff at least sort of set up as well in the real world somewhere. It, so. It'd actually be interesting if they became so huge that they have to be the mediators because like it's the act mm. because because they're so neutral, right? Mm. They even a neutral god still has bias towards their god. You know, whereas yeah. like the JC follow no direct god, right? And or mm. if anything, they actually have like because obviously as you're going to gain members, they're going to have people that with various beliefs. Like if anyone, if any group inherits the will of the realm, right, it's going to end up being the JC. They end up actually mm. growing to that size. Mm. It's true. There is that aspect of both Krusk and the Zelda being champions of Bahamut. They do. That is a twist of. Mm. Um, not necessarily being completely neutral. You can't necessarily 100% get away with at all times. Mm. There is that. But that's not necessarily anything bad. Because you've, you've, that's still your, your guiding line of... Mm. Your, 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 line, your guiding line is still justice. You're trying to seek a, a, pos, a pos, generally positive outcome against um, something, something over negative. Mm. And balancing those books is certainly a... That balancing action tips the scale up over and knocks the evil down, which is 100% where the lettuce organization try to like scale things back over, so it is more even. So that's where your ultimately your your fights or your uh, attempt at growing your organization is buffeted by this other organization trying to counteract your your good or your. Um, Certainly, your your aspects of justice. Mm. Yeah, it'll be uh yeah, it'll be interesting to see. And yeah, I'm interested. I didn't expect mm. that organization to uh, to appear. So, I mean, at the moment, Krusk is. I think he'll choose to focus on his own group, but obviously, mm. we'll see if we end up getting more in conflicts um, with them as well. No, nah, Thoradin is bad mouthing them to high heaven. Just <laughs> spreading all these rumors, starting all the rumors, back alleys and pubs. Well, <laughs> he's got his ne shady network, right? That is the yeah, that yeah. is the network to yeah, start rumors, true. right? We never <laughs> we never said his Thoradin's network is shady. It's just that's just where you go to get information. Like yeah, yeah, he'll be yeah. getting information on them, and he'll intentionally make sure that the JC gets favor on all jobs, and that people think Lettuce is oh no, they're, they're, they're beginner level. They that they can't handle these kind of jobs. They're the salad, so, but we're the meat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but putting JC on the pedestal it deserves to be. Yeah. Definitely. And uh, the Zeldmir. What's your medium term? Well, okay. So after after uh, spending some time with Adia, doing some excursions, and spending time with the tribe, when Krask is like, hey, I found this spot we're going to build. And I'll be like, yep, okay, I'm there. Um, she'd also spend a lot of that time kind of praying, probably each night, to Bahamut and kind of using prayers and dreams to kind of see where she's needed most and get some guidance on that. Mm -hmm. Um <laughs> Cross, you're talking about an apprenticeship. I suggested that perhaps we should make the JC a charity, and each adventurer is a volunteer that we make sure to establish they have the correct equipment for uh, certain missions. They take home 80% of the booty, and we take 20% to carry on as donation funding the charity. Um, and I think. You welcome donations. <laughs> we do welcome donations. <laughs> we welcome donations. I think Desi as well. Not to say that Krusk is um, not very politically or diplomatically minded, Which but I think is. Desi would try to position herself in her role as part of the JC is to be that diplomatic, like political head, where she would kind of discuss agreements with certain towns before going in to do a certain mission or uh, agree terms of certain contracts and, and that kind of thing. That makes sense. Desi used to do a lot of the talking whenever we had to do stuff like that as part of the JC. So exactly. that kind of makes sense. Uh, and um, any time she would visit Delari, she would try to do like a little uh, group cooking as, as a nice activity. Um, she would be absolutely besotted with Zilvo. 
Uh, oh yeah, she she would like what was it the blanket or something, like that you would always see like Zilvo in that in that blanket that you got her like in the in those early you know those early months. Yeah, and I think um, I don't know if anyone would actually ask, but every time she holds Zilvo, that she'd cry every time. Aww. Probably every Aww. time. Um, yeah, and then and then. <laughs> And then um, Thoradin, at some point, she's going to uh, discuss relationship with things with you. Kind of being like, I can see you're trying to be better. I like you. Should we give it a go? Uh, There are some things to discuss. Depending on your response, (laughs) I will say a bit more. Wow. Yeah, I I, I didn't, I don't know why I didn't think about this, but I mean, he's very happy to to hear that, and he'll he'll kind of relay his long term plans. He'll want to stick with Kruska as long and the JC as long as he can, but you know he'll say to Desi they just want to give up this life. Uh, he has seen the the ways that he's been doing things in the past, and he wants to do things differently, settle down and retire. And yeah, he, he's definitely happy to give it a go. And see where it can, where it can lead, as long as they are together. Yeah. Okay. So, I guess this could kind of go into long term. But if Thoradin mentions wanting to have a family, Desi will tell him that she can't. Oh. So, yeah. um, that will have to be either a discussion where, I don't know, it's up to you as well. Uh, Dan, but either they kind of can be together for a little while and then it might have to split off or maybe then and there that's a decision for Thoratin to go I really wanted a family I can't do that You can still adopt Oh yeah, there's adoption I'm sure there are plenty orphans in a in a world like this Oh, fucking hell, I'm sure there are <laughs> Rogues, rogues hell, everywhere Hell, start an <laughs> orphanage have all yeah. of the, you know, have all the children. Yeah, adopt all the, adopt all the kids. Yeah. I mean, that they, could be the start this was my plan for adopting a bunch of adventurers. So, <laughs> yeah, it this works. Is very it works. true. <laughs> I mean, look, yeah, Thoradin has, you know, very strong feelings with Desi, so I think he'll hundred percent give it a go. And I think with, with, for him personally, he he'll, he'll really want, he'll really want kids. He'll want to hand down everything, all of his life experience to someone. To, to his kids, to his daughter, to his son, and kind of live on that legacy. Because he, he'll be big on legacy as well. You know, everything that JC have done, he'll want to kind of pass that on to his kids. Um, but That's kind of unexpectedly sweet for Thoradin. Yeah. Interestingly, like... uh, sorry, interestingly, obviously Desi says she can't have children, but does she know why? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Is it so, something that could be? I mean, it, like, if Nadia is getting to the point where she can cure her brain damage, is it not in a in a place full of magic? Because I mean, I'm, I'm, I don't know why, but I'm env- envisaging like a Witcher sorcerer's scenario or Black Widow scenario. Mm-hmm. Like, it's it's could a it not be reversed? Those, it's one of those. Yeah, I think uh, I discussed it with Matt like ages ago when mm. uh, when. Talari first brought up Zilvo, mm. and I think I said at the time I can I kind of imagine it. It's not something surgical, and it's not something completely alchemical. I feel like there would be magic involved as well, and for that reason, I don't think it would be reversible. Oh, is this something it that's would... been done to her rather than a natural mm. inability? That yes, yeah. Ah, but then if it's something that's done to her, surely it's something that can be reversed. Can you untoast a piece of bread, even with magic? That's my question. I mean, you, you can reverse time on an object with wish. It, with, it, with, it, with, it, when it, you have it, spells it like wish away. out there, right, you can literally get away with quite a lot. You can get away with quite a lot, but using the wish spell is pretty fucking risky. It is. Risky. But it doesn't always get you the result you want. No, but... Mm. It, yeah. I think I think for Desi, if if she thinks, because as well as that, Desi doesn't understand magic that well. Mm. 
So from her perspective, she wouldn't think it would be reversible, she, nor she... would she necessarily want to seek it out if it would mm. risk someone else. I mean, the thing is, right, like, if she spoke to, if she ever spoke to Talari about it, which I imagine, you know, with seeing what she's like with Zilvo, would probably talk to, it would just probably come up in passing, right? Because I don't think you've ever mentioned it to the group. So, no. you know, why don't you have your own kind of thing, especially when you get into a relationship, like a serious relationship with Thoradin, which I imagine this conversation would come up. Um, and she would probably give you all of that, right? Like, all of that info. Like, she's got, you know, the regeneration spell, because I've just seen she has got level 7 spells. You know, like, regenerate, you know, again, you if it's curse, remove curse. You've got, at an extreme, you've got, you know, uh, 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 oh my god, come on. Wish? Wish at a ve- like the most extreme is like um oh, what is it called where you where you could die and then you're reborn in a new body the yeah re- true resurrection no it's not resurrection <laughs> uh, true resurrection I think is in the same body there's oh re- reincarnation reincarnation right like yeah. it would work is very extreme that is like the most like the most extreme yeah, that's mental <laughs> that's madness extreme but like I said right but some people's desire to have children like transcends almost logic. So, but she would at least have those conversations with you because she mm. knows where she she's been in that position, right? Like she, in a way, like so she would give you these are all the stuff that she's thought about over the years. So she would literally unload everything, mm. you know, onto Desi. Whether what she does with it, obviously, is up to Desi, right? But I just want to put out that that information would be given to her from Talari. I guess the um, the interesting part to what. For Talari especially, is does Talari's hope for help for the Zelvmir drive her to continue being an adventurer? Because at the moment you you you're I, I would say you're boost up to level fifteen pretty much for this probably the cap for the most of you reach. Mm. Uh, well, at least for uh, Talari would reach right now. Over the course of the long term, as things go, you could probably all reach level twenty, depending. Mm. But to Talari, if she does no more adventuring, she's probably at that level fifteen cap. Is is the Dzelmir like wanting to help and wanting to help get power to help Dzelmir? Does that would that would that drive Talari to adventure more to 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 help to aid to to grow? At the risk of, you know, neglecting her own yeah, uh, I don't, I, family life she's built. Yeah, I think that is encroaching onto long term. Because if she was to do something like that, it wouldn't happen until after Zilvo's older. Mm. And, and, time, and, and Well, this is it, right? Because, like, you know, Talari's a half-elf. She can live for quite a while. I'm oh, pretty no. Sure. And Des- 20 years. No. What a shame to my elven life. Span. Well, that's what I mean, right? <laughs> Talari will live for quite a while. I mean, I know Desi will live longer, but like I said, like, and Thor- dwarves live for a long time as well, like 250 right. or something, or, you know. Oh, so it's getting to the end of that. But um, if, you know, if time was allow- allowed, once um, uh, Zilvo is old enough to be a bit more independent, there's no reason if 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 Desi felt so strongly about it, right? Like this is Yennefer's length of like obsession of wanting to have a child. She would try to help Desi because the Desi obviously sort of helped in a way Talari get Zilbo back. So she would return that favor if Desi's desire was. She's not gonna she's not gonna force it on her, right? If Desi's desire is to have one, she would do one, but not at the risk of Zilbo. I think if her and Thoradin, like, end up together, she would 100% desire to have one. Mm-hmm. Probably about 40% for herself, 60% because Thoradin wants them. Mm-hmm. But then, uh, yeah, she definitely, like, showed desire to have a child because she thought it was something that she could just never have. Mm-hmm. So then, yeah, like, like I said, once Zilva sort of 18, 20... You know, and and well, again, well, actually, we're encroaching onto long term, yeah. so I'll come Daddy's back to that. suggestion would just be to adopt if you can't bear one naturally. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, that would probably be the option that uh, Desi would do to save the marriage. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, Thorin's happy. I mean, because it it could still be my kid. You would have raised the child. 
But Desi so, wouldn't you know, wear it. Yeah. Mm. Just because yeah. it doesn't use it, yeah. Step into it's not like into genetically the... yours, but it's still like your kid because you. Mm -hmm. I mean, is that is that enough authority for it to be? No, it'd be, it'd be the fruit of his labor. It's his legacy he wants. So okay, so not necessarily his genet genetic material, but no, he does want it genetic. But you could do that. It would be another woman that would bear it. Oh, like a surrogate mother. Yeah, yeah, like like a surrogate. Ah. Uh, yeah. So it'd be still part of him, obviously not. Desi, but they'd they'd raise it together, as if it was. That's, that is also an option. That is also an option. Desi a much less happy with it. Yeah, much less less extreme one. Yeah. Desi, Imagine, is Desi would be okay for the fact that she can't can't do it, and for that fact as well. Like, I think if Thorin could still have his kids, and she could be part of that. Like, I, I think she'd be okay with that, because from her standpoint, she didn't know her parents, like, while they were, um, well, you know, they, they had their shit, but they were her parents, and while there was that connection there, there wasn't, uh, there wasn't, like, a, oh, blood of my blood, uh, things, I need this to be, like, she, she was technically raised very, very differently. So in that respect, I think she'd consider the raising of someone far more important mm -hmm. in her eyes. I will also say <laughs> the immediate thought, and um, um, feel free to um, punch her when she says this, but she'd go, oh, well, it should be someone we know. <laughs> Oh, no. <laughs> 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 she fucking look at that when she says this. Oh, wow. It better not be me. <laughs> um, <laughs> I think she looks at you first, Nadia, sees your face, looks at Tolari, sees their face, and then just looks down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't think, I don't think that's going to There are many things I would do for you, but bearing a child is not one of them because, no offense, it would require me to have sex with <laughs> someone. Uh. Yeah, yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have to. There's ways around it, right? <laughs> I assume that I assume there's doctors, right? Extract. That could possibly <laughs> yeah. a magical, a magical turkey method. Based, uh. Maybe a ma magical turkey based, though. Yeah, Let's... <laughs> it's. <laughs> was... Sorry, Jordan, but I'm sorry. not sleeping sorry with you. Sorry about this. No, 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 sorry. <laughs> story, Desi, but I'm not carrying a child even for you. Oh dear me. Well, it's definitely something to consider for the long term as yeah. we speculate on this. Yeah. Um, so, for the medium term, with the original Merkel fully restored, they decide not to end all aspects of Undead throughout the realm, but agrees to attempt to facilitate a 25% reduction in all Undead in Kelenvor's wastes. And they promise to mostly, mostly collect the soul, the new souls of the undead. The results of just that alone, the reduction of the, of the 25 a quarter of the undead from Kenneval's wastes, makes it a massive more likelihood of people being able to travel through it safely. Areas so the the routes of that people used to take from Tiamat Heights across Bilibdul Bil Pool Port and into Tempest Town, so through the middle where Thoradin's um, tidal wave, um, not not known as Thoradin's tidal wave at least, um, get destroyed, destroyed the city. Um, that reduction allows for that to be restored, and actually for footholds to begin in the in that area as well, allowing for. Um, some of the old cities to actually be um, start to be restored, or at least start to be safe to exist in as a as a safe point in time, which could be a like a safe and good training ground area for the Justice Collective to situate themselves. It is directly in pretty much the middle of the realm. It allows you to be quite flexible where you wanted to go. You're close to the capital, you're close to some of the other areas of the realm where um, you're able to uh, 
like exist and also be fairly independent still. And for your all your trainings of newbies coming in, it's a good area for for them to, to gain gain experience and feel like they're making a difference from an automatic standpoint as well. If that's an area you want you agreed that that was that suited you. I would leave the positioning to cross because it's his kind of not to carry on with babies, but it's his baby. It's his, <laughs> like, yeah. his glorious thing. So I kind of feel like I'd be like, Cross, where does your where does your heart choose <laughs> choose our location? Sorry, um I, I missed the last bit you just said that. So I have to pick the So I was saying because so Merkel Merkel reduces it doesn't end all undead he reduces a large amount of undead in the realm okay which makes makes the kalanvor's wastes a much safer area to people to potentially exist on a longer term period okay. allowing some of the cities to be able to um return to an extent and potentially could be a good training ground like it's a it's a good potentially a good like immediate starting point for a new volunteer, a new person to come in and actually be like, okay, we're going to train you to deal with the undead because that's obviously the most immediate thing. Mm. And then once you get strong enough, like it's a safe environment, relatively speaking. Um, yeah. To be think... in. It's a gen. It's like, and you can make it like the test to be a kind of general, you know, you got to get from one and, side to yeah. the other without dying. Yeah. You know? yeah. <laughs> I think, um, yeah, I think Grask is down. I think the only thing is he'd put in like some safety guidelines, maybe like you know, if mm. you're rank zero, you know, like two seniors must accompany you or something yeah. like that. So yeah, but but the but the general idea, yeah, he's he's down for. I'd definitely fuck with a few newbies, and every time we faced an adventuring-looking kind of zombie, I'd be like, oh, poor Bert. <laughs> <laughs> That's mean. Works with, but it works, <laughs> works with Thorin's thing as well, right? Because he wanted to to make amends for Tempest Town, yeah. Yeah, and he could because he wanted to sort of make Edgeway into that as well. So that kind of like, wraps up, yeah, sort of quite nicely. Yeah, yeah. I mean, out of curiosity, Matt, if we went to like properly to town on Kellenvor's waste, could we reduce the amount of undead to like minimal? <laughs> Hundred percent. I mean, you can get there. It takes again. It just takes time. You got to find them. You got to make sure they're all gone. And then it does. It's a hundred percent feasible. And that's where your your benefactors come in, right? Your it's a hundred percent a guiding principle of Helm, like protection of the realm. Like this is a perfect place to sure up the the protection of the realm because it's a it's a constant threat. It's Bahamut's behind your back the whole time, and then actually for Sylvanas especially, it helps to reclaim those areas of land for for nature. So it fulfills all three of your benefactors. So you've got potentially a whole aspect of of power um, behind you to see it through. So the other advantage you got as well is unlike monsters, the undead can't breed as well. So you're always going to be facing dwindling numbers as well. For everyone you That's take true. down, they're not going to be replaced as such, because you would like to think with the Merkle being back in station, the souls would automatically, you know, wouldn't link, you know, the, the they wouldn't linger to become more undead, so uh, you know, it's just a, it's a war of attrition at that point, but you've got a head start. Mm. Kind of I thing. like the idea as well that we kind of get uh, slightly more careful with our recruits not for the respect not for the fact that we were like oh we're putting them in too much danger with the undead more like there's not enough skeletons to deal with we can't just send them out to wraiths <laughs> like we've got to <laughs> we're gonna work them up <laughs> get the training dummies yeah. Yeah. my part of my long term was helping deal with kelly Moore's ways as well so yeah 100 percent. a it fits over a lot of people's um will mm to do so um but aside from from that the the, the clearing up aspects of uh kill and force wastes um tensions so because of the good the jc is doing and the ungood the evil the the lettuce are trying to do you get a you get quite a disparity between the good and neutral cities trying to basically like act 
act true to themselves, and then the evil he's seeing themselves as being more ostracized. The downside of that is that the evil people of evil cities start to make areas unsafe for travelers. They start to think, okay, no one's not many, many people are going to be coming to our city anymore. We need to grab them in. We need to attack them in, get them in. And as a result, the roads are becoming more dangerous, regardless of the Helm encampment mercenaries. Um, certainly aspects of the Justice Collective would be tasked with taking people places to make sure that, again, you can provide safe harbour for, for people as they travel. And generally speaking, it's the the land itself becomes wilder and even gets to the extent where cities stop dealing with cities of opposite alignment. So in um, Bane's Grasp, um, La Farm, the god, of the evil god of the hunt, finds a lot of the a lot of the cities aren't dealing with him anymore because of their evil ways. Even though they provide a lot of food and, and resources for for that region, as think as time goes on, regardless of your attempts for good, it seems that the Letters Organization is trying to make it as equally evil to try and counteract your balances for of good with evil. Mm. Which I imagine our preparation to be like go up against them is going to get higher and higher. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We're gonna end up. We're gonna end up rather than a god war. We're gonna end up with a guild war. Natural civil war of of in the realm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what about so, Sir? What about Sir's yes. Deep? Yeah. So Crusk. Sir's Deep, at all cases, refuse communication with Krusk. <laughs> with all at all cases, refuse. Um, in fact, at times they even try to capture Krusk as proof that slaves can be returned and restored. At times, <laughs> much to the but it's never it's never successful against Krusk. But um, it's certainly a a contentious point with Sir Deep, and I think that's a good point to us to discuss our long term plans, so that. Um, we can see how the long term goes on for for you all. So again, we'll start from the top. Talari, what's your long term? I didn't really put much down for this, but um, but I guess that's going to sort of sort of change ish. But um, the the overall aim is from Talari's point of view is just to live in relative peace with Zilvo, right? Because the the long term we said was like three years plus or something like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, you know. So at least, especially on the early side of that, you know, uh, you know, live in relative peace. The way I actually, you know, abstract sort of see that going as Zilvo gets older, you know, and, and matures and, and, and stuff, you know, with people like Thoradin coming in uh, all the time, you know, Nadia, whoever is going to come in and obviously interact with Zilvo quite a lot. And obviously he what you know he'll hear about the Justice Collective and obviously that his mother was part of it and all this that and the other. I I can expect I expect that he will get involved against. She'll obviously get be against it because obviously you know of all the everything she went through to get you know for him to become alive, for him to go and into fighting, you know is is she obviously doesn't want him to do that. But I think even from the offset. I think she kind of expected it was going to happen, you know, in a way, you know, her father was a fighter as well. You know, she obviously did what she did. So I think it was always inevitable. Mm. Um, she would likely help him keep him alive, you know, obviously with her healing, like what better way for her to use that um, mm. than keeping her son alive. Now, whether he allows her to do that is a whole separate thing, because obviously, you know, Someone in their late teens, early twenties, having their mother follow around, follow them around on their adventures, <laughs> may not exactly go down so well. So, um... <laughs> yeah, tell oh, people like my mum packed me this scarf, and poor old Zilvo's got my mum's in the adventuring squad. Yeah, exactly. She heals me, man. She, oh. she, you know, she she won't she won't stop following me around. <laughs> exactly. Um, so I imagine at some point he will obviously splinter away from her. Um, what she really does at that point, I just I don't know. I mean, 
she will probably help Desi with the child situation if they haven't figured out a solution, but it sounds like they probably have. Um, she, again, may even at that point, you know, if her, if her child's disappeared, uh, she may try to become a surrogate, obviously not sleeping with Thoradin. But because, obviously, Desi's an elf, she's a half-elf, at least it's going to be at least somewhat close. Um, so she would probably sort of do that. Again, if, see, if they're at a point, you know, it's like saying 20-odd years' time that they're still in that mm -hmm. position. Um, other than that, though, I think it's probably going to be more based on what everyone else does, because she's really just going to be wandering around at that point, you know, going back to her, maybe back to her house and just living out her days and hoping that she never has to hear that her son's been defeated. And if he ever is, she would go apeshit. Mm -hmm. I could see Zilvo being one of those people who joins the the Justice Collective mm. as the, as like the new organization as it grows. Oh yeah, yeah, hundred um, percent. And so you could potentially be like one of those, like the the house healers as part of the Justice Collective. That's true. Yeah, she probably would then rejoin the, the Justice Collective as like yeah, as part of their medical because they're going to need it. Let's face it. Yeah. I was um, going to suggest that that he could uh, he could join in. Crash yeah. would be happy to have him. Of yeah. Course. So yeah, she he would join them, and she would then join uh, as a healer to the JC. You know, in charge of their, mm. well, I'd probably not in charge as such, but would work in their medical area. At least then, indirectly, you know, helping as best he can, mm. as best she can. Um, sure. But yeah. It's very sweet. Um, and Nadia. Your long-term plans. So I wrote out, he's a dealing with Kelethmore's waste, which is pretty much covered at this point. Now that gets sorted by Merkel and you, and Krusk starts a holy war, creating <laughs> a, creating and defending a neutral ground, basically, for refugees. Don't think she'll ever start her own family, uh, because she just doesn't see the point uh, in, in any of that kind of thing. But she vibes that lot, will eventually retire to probably more training information kind of thing. The idea of Nadia sitting in the dodgy corner of the pub is pretty fucking funny to me. <laughs> uh, in my but... day, we we walked everywhere. We we went. We took a horse everywhere. You know. None of this teleporting. Shit. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Do it yourself. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, but yeah. Um... I killed. I killed a. Uh, 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 what's the name? A bale. Yes, Nadia. Yes. <laughs> it's like that it's like that that meme of like that person on the zimmer phone oh yeah yeah day. it was like this let's get you to bed grandma yeah exactly yeah 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 um but yeah um that's pretty much it she's gonna continue being an axe happy nut job until she can no longer be an axe happy nut job and then she will train other people how to be an axe happy, happy nut job mm -hmm. <laughs> Pretty much. Would she, would um, she ever involve herself with the JC or the, the the new JC? She would probably be tangentially involved in the new JC, but she wouldn't be committed to the new JC. If you see what I mean, mm -hmm. she's perfectly happy to show up, help them fight undead in the waste, help train their new people. But she also has, like, she runs around doing her own thing. Um. A lot as well, mm. and if, like I say, if Cross starts a holy war, she's likely to uh, ditch active JCing in favor of like actively creating like uh, a haven um, via being an axe happy nut job. <laughs> multi multi purpose skill. It is a multi-purpose skill. I it's like the wonderful. idea of Nadia just coming in and we're just like, this is Nadia, your temporary tutor. Right, now does everyone have an axe? Yeah, it's like a guest, guest speaker at a uni, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah absolutely, yeah. That is, sorry, but that's, the idea of Nadia as a guest speaker at anything is really funny. Um... <laughs> they taught us, we have to do it like this. No, you just get an axe and you hit them pretty fucking hard. Did your opponent end up dead? Yes. Are you dead? No. Good. That is the correct result. Top mark. 
A star, everybody. A star. A star, everybody. A star. Yeah, she's she's not quite that bad, but yeah. Um, nice. Yeah, she will run around fighting demons and anybody who's being nasty and anybody who threatens the realm, as per her oath. Um, I suppose there's an element as well, right? Getting into general, getting re- getting into general trouble, yeah. Because uh, there's probably a thing around those summoning circles as well with Nathaniel, right? Like, because they're still around. Yep. They run around as a pair most of the time. Daddy and Nathaniel. He, he, he can have his own horse and they can have an entire pack of dire wolves and they can turn up and cause problems for literally everybody mm-hmm. anywhere they go. And sometimes solve problems, but it probably doesn't feel like it was on there. <laughs> They're both just as chaotic as each other. Nathaniel just hides it better. Mm. <laughs> But yeah, it's a, her long term is fairly simple. I also, in, if then nobody saw it, I had a very depressing thought of Nadia being the youngest of the party, actually likely to be the first to die, because the rest of you have all got uh, non human long long Actually, not a cross. Cross, cross will die first. Oh, uh, really? Is cross got the shortest? He's older. Time. He's older. <laughs> um, all half orcs <laughs> live the, half orcs live as much as long as humans, and cross gets older than Nadia, so. Well, never know, age though. age wise, Cross yeah. would be the first to go. Actually, uh, half orcs die faster than humans. Oh, do they? Half orcs go to about seventy, eighty. Humans meant to go to a hundred. Oh, uh, okay. Well, oh, there you go then. Case, okay, maybe it won't be Nadia. Uh, Sorry, Cross. It's not, gar- it's not guaranteed to be Nadia, at least. No. It's not guaranteed to be Nadia. <laughs> However, considering Nadia's, you know, act happy nut job tendencies, it might be. Could be. Could be. Every time she turns up to the JC, she's got like one extra scar, <laughs> <laughs> some more injuries. I've st- I've started playing Dragon Age actually as Nadia, uh, Dragon Age Inquisition. And at the end of that, you get your arm cut off. So you know, I uh, might take inspiration from that. Aspiration, that's weird. Uh, but yeah, that's her. That's her long term. It's fairly simple. Mm-hmm. Okay, so Thoradin. Yeah, I, I think this has completely changed. I, I, I um, I completely forgot how long dwarves live. I mean, Thorin's probably got another hundred, two hundred years in him. Um, although he's he's getting older. Um, I did put down kind of retire from JC, but I kind of see Thorin as being, Cross being the leader, but uh, Thorin being kind of the. Uh, You'd be the, the treasurer. General. You know, someone with the money. Well, he'd be the treasurer, but yeah, he'd look after the troops initiations, kind of lead some of the jobs. He's got the contacts, the networks with the Thieves Guild, and, and, you know, contacts in each city. Um, so he'll be a part of the JC, I, I think, for quite a while. But his long, long term aim is to, you know, have that family with Desi and potentially have a uh, surrogate mother being Talari. I think that would. Yeah, I think that would work out really well for them. I mean, if Thorin just wants to pass down his legacy, raise kids, you know, have that bit of land, start a farm, you know, rest easy, put up his sword, and um, kind of give up his, his uh, berserker ways, his barbarian ways. Um, and I think when he does do that, he will finally get rid of the lead hands. He'll get Solari to remove curse, <laughs> and he'll. Get rid at of last yeah he doesn't see i guess the point in them and raising kids you know when you've got that uh, yeah it just seems weird it'll take you a while to get used to not wearing them yeah you your yeah. hand movements are really quick almost as quick as me <laughs> yeah <laughs> speed training for sure but yeah i'll have to climatize without them but um yeah I think that's about that's about it. Sweet. And Krusk. Okay, so long term plans. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, this lot of being difficult. <laughs> I warn you oh. now: if you become a lich, Desi is <laughs> going to kill you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think. Okay, so. Again, just with the expansion of the JC, but at this point, I would see it as an organization which is quite large and is kind of not, it's no longer under like Krask or the other OG members' direct control. It's like become its own sort of thing. So 
Yeah, and at this point, I think he would have had his finalised like paladin oaths, which Krask mm-hmm. will also swear to, and like all new sort of members have to swear to these. Um, and so Krask will kind of be technically, you know, like a part paladin, part sorcerer now. Yeah. Um, what, what kind of flavour of the oaths do you think they would be? Just out of interest. I think it would be stuff like um, to serve justice throughout the land, regardless of the local custom. That that sort mm. of thing. It's kind of like absolute. The idea of like absolute justice, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, and then it would kind of have like the code of a code of conduct for like battles and like maybe larger scale conflicts, things like that, where you can't. Genius convention. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, it would mainly be around like the idea that the justice of the Justice Collective is what is important, and it kind of supersedes like the local customs or whatever. So, in that case, you would kind of almost be like obliged to go in and do something. You can't mm-hmm. sort of be be on the sidelines. Um, and that is obviously almost like a target for the all the evil cities, and maybe even mm-hmm. some of the good ones as well, just where things like kind of deviate. Um. From from sort of yeah, so yeah, that's kind of the, the high level. Um, okay, I think in the first big show of force from the JC and Krask will lead this personally as well. Um, is is to go to Certis Deep and basically forcibly forcefully uh, liberate the slaves and. Assuming that goes well, Krask will either offer to like absorb them into his own organization, you know, and kind of train them up as the JC, or he'll kind of offer to rehouse them, or they can become things, you know, like blacksmiths and stuff. They don't have to become like, like fighter sort of members. Um, and then after Cert is deep, I think he's going to deal with this other organization, which is making travel difficult and stuff. And I think same thing. It's just going to be like a big show of force where mm-hmm. he goes in and doesn't have to be a total shot down but at least cripple their ability to like you know affect people on the road and that that sort of thing so yeah kind of two two big shows of force i think and then from there continuing on with like you know wherever he feels necessary probably in order of like how um how mm-hmm. far they deviate from like his own sort of ideals of justice and uh yeah, I think that's pretty much what Russ will be doing. And I'll, yeah, yeah, I think I think that's like his jest, basically. I just have a question. Before you show these uh, signs of force, do you like talk to me or Thoradin, or do you just like get uh, get the army, the army go? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, th- I think he would consult for sure. He would consult with Desi and Thoradin um, if it and like try and work out like what's the best way we can do this. How can we minimize like you know uh unnecessary casualties that kind of thing but i mean it's the kind of thing where if it came down to it and like say desi or Faridan said we just don't think you should do this at all i think at that point Krass would be like look these are the oaths and this is what the jc stands for um i think in that reasoning desi would initially advise against it but say if there's no other way to convince you send in and i've already come up with this name off the top of my head are Shadow Knights, which are our Black Ops <laughs> backup team <laughs> to basically <laughs> to basically go in, get the slaves out under cover of darkness. Nobody knows who did it. Situation. <laughs> I was thinking, uh, the exact, I was thinking like, the exact same. Wow. Right. I've got. I hate. I hate to throw a spanner in Desi's words, but moving a large civilian population none of whom were expecting it, many of whom are probably physically unable to move fast and or quietly. Will be a challenge. I'll just say that. So the way I picture the Shadow Knights is that they're a mix of stealthy mother cluckers, but mainly I picture them as like because Crush such like a teleporting sorcerer. A bunch of teleporters. Mm. Oh, so, so, I pic- so they can sneak around. So they can sneak around. So I picture it would be like they'd go in and group by group of, of slaves, they just teleport them out of there. 
into different cities and spread them amongst the entire populace. Mm. Also, Krask himself can also do things now, like he can go ethereal and like walk through the plane, stuff like that. So, okay, yeah, I think, yeah, I mean, it's not unreasonable. I think he would go with Desi's, which I assume is probably Desi's unit. This is like in my head that this is like Desi's people, <laughs> the Black Ops Knights. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I think he would go with that option and, and try and do that. Mm-hmm. Um, but if it if it failed or the members were caught or something, then it would be it would be back to Gale Force. Yeah, yeah, of course. But I I'd say with the with the other organization, um, Desi would be like the diplomatic answer is no, we shouldn't do this. Mm. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> they are causing a lot of trouble. So she'd probably agree with you in the end, unfortunately. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sure. It's like, um, what was that shadow organization in Naruto? I can't remember what it was called now. The, no, the guys that wore the mask for the oh, yeah, Anbu, that was it. Yeah, yeah. It's like that. That's what it sounds yeah, like. Yeah, I was kind of picturing that as well, yeah. Um, I mean, just, just one more thing, but probably not as significant as these. Is Given Krusk's, yeah, like I was saying, like teleporty, plane walking sort of nature now, and I guess assuming he like continues to level, he'll kind of be more like mobile in that sense. He'll also try and do things like maybe have like a gate which goes to like another plane or something like that, you know, just to just facilitate like large scale movement. But yeah, that's just that's just like a side thing he'll do. Mm-hmm. Sure. And that leads us nicely onto the Zelbeer. Perfect. <clears throat> I got lots to say. And I apologize now. <laughs> um in the long term Oh, let's start with, like, initial time. Um, As uh, the organization of the JC becomes bigger and bigger and Krask and Thoradin and Desi start to kind of take a step back. By the way, Krask, the first thing in my note is if Krask becomes a lich, I will make it my life's work to kill him. (laughs) So I'm really glad you didn't decide to do that. I was kind of debating it but i think there's probably not a good way to become long living without doing there some is no evil, good so. way <laughs> yeah so sadly it was uh, not meant to be um so as like the jc and the collective of the jc as we begin to step back and uh as desi kind of retires with thoradin i think with talari kind of being the surrogate there's a little bit of struggle from Desi's side emotionally, sort of like, I can't do what she can kind of thing, but I think that will be completely washed away as time goes on, as like, they begin to raise the children together on a farm or whatever the the original plan is. Um, But unfortunately, I have uh, terrible things to say as well because desi is the longest living member of uh of the party uh as everyone begins to die unfortunately from violence or old age initially she'd probably consider trying to push herself away from those that are still left but being that thorod and her have kids together and Talara is kind of also connected to that family in that way as well. I, I kind of picture she'd keep Talari around and try to really involve Talari in raising the kids as well. Kind of like a three-way parenthood. Okay. Yeah. Uh, kind of strangely. Um, but as time goes on and the kids, you know, leave and begin to journey on and and they are 100% going to become adventurers although probably Thoradin and her would have fights on how much we tell them when they're smaller it's a basic it's a it's almost going to be like a Kylo Ren Ray situation right Mm. like you've got these two kids that basically end up growing up almost together you know connected but not connected you know it's going to be a bit weird you know so it kind of reminds me of (laughs) <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
but as um as everyone kind of fades away and she has to deal with that loss there'd be like a small time that she kind of deals herself and goes back to the justice collective and kind of takes over from a og standpoint um this has to go the right way and a little bit what's the world arrogant of her to mm. kind of assume she knows best to kind of go uh decide who the true successor for krusk should be based on krusk and his ideals and values and that kind of thing she wouldn't let go of the reins even if it's a bit of a slight hostile takeover needs to be but she wouldn't let go of the reins until she found someone who was krusk enough for her and also with this sort then, of with the with the timeless body feature you get as a monk like you basically don't suffer the frailty of old age so yeah, you can be I'll as be... old as you want and be still like a you know in your prime almost what's that yeah yeah, yeah. exactly um but after finally finding that person that person who can inspire like Krusk can, who makes possibly incredibly rash but good earnest decisions. Okay, maybe maybe slightly more wiser than Krusk, but apart from that, Krusk enough. She'd take a pilgrimage back to the temple, the Hermit's Temple, not teleporting, not riding a horse, just walking. She would walk to the temple and unless Bahamut had any particular quests, any ways she could help people for her to go do, she would spend the rest of her days tending to the gardens, tending to the monks, and I think, she, yeah, she would spend the rest of her days there and probably have a bit like what Nadia had with Nathaniel ascending stone for like each of mm. her kids, where she probably just every so often check up on them. And the grandkids and the great grandkids. And the grandkids and the great grandkids. And yeah, she would just tend to the temple until she hopefully saw that peace that she saw when she died. I I would agree. Um Okay, so um, to discuss how the long term pans out from everything we've discussed. So I think it's safe to say within the within the three to four years after the medium term has happened, um, the JC and and others will, will leave the rescue effort to end slavery in Certis Deep. This becomes the first direct case of good interfering with evil city business in over 5,000 years. <laughs> the result of which makes Certus Deep a ruin and actually is an unlivable city as a result. That Certus Deep is destroyed from what you what you did, essentially. Or for better or for worse, as whoever may um, decide it. So what a lot saying because its is... foundation was taken away. They couldn't run the city without the slaves, mm. and they had to abandon it. So it was like an yeah. economic collapse, kind of. All or... in one, right? So the the from the fighting to, to okay. the damage from the fighting to try them trying to recover, them not being able to, like essentially, it becomes a city that can't be uh, recovered. Mm. Okay. Okay. Um, well, a few years after which was building, so after, over the years building up between Justice Collective and Lettuce, trying to um, gain dominance over the realm in terms of the, the for the heart of the realm, Lettuce leads assaults on a few other cities in Retribution, destro destroying Ilmata Town, um, Yondala Town, Moradin City, um, Torn Village. Yeah, show of force. Let's fuck them. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> That's a low blow. The Clicky Farm. Ooh, and even, oh, the, port, and even oh. the Port of Eldath are, oh, okay. cities are targeted as a result. Um, due to like the instabilities that this 
causes. Helm has to focus entirely on the internal structure of the realm, making sure that actually the realm itself doesn't fracture. Him becoming more um, more vocal in his duties on the realm itself, which actually creates room for aberrations, cosmic horrors to begin to slip into the realm as they those interplanar invaders start to seep in, which Nadia and all and her brother work together to try and um, basically it's your whole oath to be to an extent. Oh your, yeah. Your whole as soon oath. as that starts happening, yeah. she's got to drop everything else and go fuck these guys up. 100%. Get off my lawn. Hundred percent. As so, as this instability is is building within the realm, the um, Lessis take an opportunity to try and kill the founding members of the JC, which ultimately is unsuccessful. But as a result, this triggers all tensions between good cities and evil cities, who those close to each other, the good and evil cities close to each other, begin outright fighting with one another. Within 10 to 15 years of the Surtur's Deep tragedy, as what the evil call it, um, the Second Holy War begins in earnest. And so historically, that starting from Surtur's Deep, they count, the story, the story is count the, the sacking of Surtur's Deep, the, the, the saving of Surtur's Deep, however, however which way people try to spin it. They categorized that as the start of the Second Holy War in the realm. And chaos reigned supreme. And after all this, throughout all this, even though you've been trying to take on the efforts in Kellenfor's Waste, you've been trying to settle Lettuce as an organization, trying to take them out, trying to balance the con consequences of what's been going on, You've been able to clear a lot of the waste, allowing you to take a shot at actually settling the capital. Which, when you arrive at the capital, Bane themselves reveal to be hiding in the mortal form of Elosia Sponet, and have been binding their time, Whoa. sowing <laughs> the seeds of tyranny and descent that built into the Holy War. <laughs> as a surprise, as a result, this leads to the JC, the whole organization, all the good that you've brought to the realm to actually attack Bane in, in the old capital, to banish him and defeat him once and for all. Finally, eliminating Bane in his entirety. <laughs> Now, what happens after that time? What happens in the resettling of the world after Bane is truly gone? After all that you've put towards in your characters' lives, the good you tried to do, the, the justice you've tried to bring to the realm, does lead to a huge reshaping of the realm as a result. But I think as we all discussed a long time ago, this realm had a status quo, but it was an unsteady one. It was balanced on the idea that evil should exist just as much as good should exist, just as much as neutral should exist. And your actions ultimately lead to the good existing, the good winning through throughout in the realm. And much to the to the dis disheartening of evil, to, to have to revert back to what they used to do in the five thousand years prior, in the in the millennia prior of having to hide, can't be as out in the open. Ultimately good does win out through all your actions. But how does that take us? Where does that go? Who knows until next time on 
a different Ascendant Lands. 